So today is Monday, August 4th, 2014, and we're getting ready for our next Inside the Moto Man studio here at the Peterson Automotive Museum, and our guest is Hurley Haywood. Um, and you know, I knew it would be cool to hang out with race car drivers, but I had no idea that if you hang out with race car drivers, they send you race cars. And this is not just any race car, this is the 2014 Porsche 919 Hybrid. It's actually their press car. There are two race cars in existence. This is a third car that they kind of trot out for special occasions. It's here visiting with us for Hurley. And then uh, next week it goes up to Pebble Beach to see you guys on the Monterey Peninsula. But I think while it's here, we should take some time to get to know it. I was excited back in June of 2012 when Porsche announced they were going to get back into the P1 class of Le Mans, uh, but it was over the following year they did this burlesque show where they kind of teased you of what they were going to do with it. Um, but really the first thing that stands out about this car when you see it in person is the sheer size. It is 183 inches long, it's 74 inches wide, and it's only 41 inches tall. To give you an idea, like some perspective, I'm six foot tall and this thing only comes up to my waist. Or another idea of perspective, see that car over there? That is a Mark III GT40. Uh, it was one that was built only for the street and it's never been raced. So um, think of it this way, it's a Ford GT40 plus one inch. Okay, so moving on. What's really cool about this car is that it's a hybrid. And I don't mean in the sense of, oh, it's so nice that we're being environmentally friendly in that big, bad racing world, and we're gonna love everybody equally and hug trees. That is not what we're trying to do. What's cool here is that there are two separate hybrid systems here. Not parallel, not serial, but two separate systems. Basically, this is an all-wheel drive car, and it has its own hybrid system in the front. So this is what you would think of on an F1 car, a CARE system, Kinetic Energy Recovery System, that takes the spent energy from the brakes, and in this case, it puts it back into a battery, not a flywheel like you see in some of the F1 cars. Um, we clear here, so let's move on to the back. The back, again, its own hybrid system. This one is significantly more tricked than the front. Come around here and I'll show you. So you got the exhaust here, right? Now, if you guys are familiar with the Audi system, uh, their Lair Le Mans car, they capture the spent exhaust energy from the turbocharger. This car captures the spent energy through a turbine. This has a separate turbine to capture exhaust. So if you're taking stock, you've got cares up front and a turbine in the back. Okay, now that we've covered jet engines and Porsche race cars, let's go back to the side and talk more about the regular engine. I know we've discussed that it is a V4 turbocharged, direct fuel injection, gasoline powered, puts out well north of 500 horsepower. But what's more interesting is what it's made out of. It's aluminum, titanium alloys, and magnesium. Uh, it is connected to an aluminum honeycomb core, which is basically the structure of this car, so it's not a carbon fiber tub. But the outside of the car, the body panels, they are carbon fiber, and some are Kevlar. So it's kind of like going back into the day of the Porsche 959. Most of those body panels were Kevlar. Um, notice the wheel housings. Notice how high the wheel housing is in the rear and the front, but then this is very, very low. And the reason why they do that is because they have a closed monocoque shell for the driver. And what's unique about this car is it has the most interior capacity for a race car. Now you would think, why would a race car need a big interior? It's not for the comfort of the driver, because if you look at the way the driver sits, he's kind of like laying down. I'm not kidding you. If you look anything, go to Porsche.com. This is the way the driver sits in this car. I'm totally not exaggerating. Anyway, uh, enough with my gymnastics. Uh, basically, they're giving you more space for better visibility. So they lower the sills here to give the driver significantly better visibility. Okay, so let's bring all these bits together, the outside and the inside. It all runs through a seven-speed sequential gearbox, and the entire package weighs, and I'm not saying this because it's a Porsche, uh, 1,918 pounds. 1,918. Get it? One. 918. Anyway, moving on. Um, that is not the most interesting stat about this car. 
What is far more interesting is the amount of energy the two hybrid systems reclaim. So we know that the lap around Le Mans is what, 8.462 miles, whatever it is. You guys can put the exact number in the comments below. Um, but these two hybrid systems together reclaim, and I'm gonna use a really fancy term here, eight megajoules per lap. Translated into something you and I would understand, that is 2.2 kilowatt hours per lap around Le Mans that is claimed by a race car. Okay, now that we've covered all the technical bits, let's talk history. I mean, after all, this is the 919. What came before the 919, the 918. What came before that? The 917, which begs the question, when was the last time Porsche saw Le Mans? And believe it or not, that was 2010, the RS Spider. But much more importantly, when was the last time that Porsche competed in the prototype class? That was back in 1998, 16 years ago, the 911 GT198. Okay, so history's all fine and good, but how are they doing today? Well, uh, this car debuted at the Six Hours of Silverstone, where it did okay. It did number three behind the two Toyotas. Then they crossed the channel over into France, and they campaigned two of these at Le Mans, the 14 car and the 20 car. Uh, the 14 car was doing okay, but the 20 car, believe it or not, was leading the race uh, up until the last like hour and a half. And then, sadly, uh, the anti-roll bar broke. Then an hour later, the number 14 car, guess what? The anti-roll bar broke. Uh, they were able to pit both, and they got the 14 car back out, uh, where it did the ceremonial lap and took 11th place. Uh, the number 20 car never got back out and DNF'd. But the thing to really point out here is, that's kind of like a stupid thing to happen in racing. It's kind of like bad luck in your first year back. Uh, but look at what they've done with this technology and how amazing it was back at Le Mans, which kind of begs the question, is this really their first rodeo? Um, so I'm gonna have to go back into history here and say no, because uh, were you aware that Dr. Ferdinand Porsche himself invented the hybrid way back in the day, not a Toyota Prius in whatever, 2002. Um, he had a car, the Loner Porsche, uh, that was originally an electric car. It had a two wheel hub electric motor system in the front, but then there were other derivations of it that introduced the concept of a hybrid. So there was a gasoline engine that drove, was a generator for the two electric hub motors. And then there was a later version that was a four wheel drive system and was raced. So it was over a hundred years ago that Professor Ferdinand Porsche himself was racing a hybrid. So click here to watch one of our 250 other episodes. Click here to subscribe. And can we ask you guys a favor? Can you watch these within the first 36 hours? Because it gets us more views, which gets us more dollars, which gets you more episodes. And of course, follow us, Motoman TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time.